Now, I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I just get into a bit of a baking mood. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe work's a bit stressful. Maybe you need a little bit of a pick-me-up at home. Maybe the weather's changing. Whatever it is, I know that baking something up will totally do the trick for me. And in my personal and professional opinion, during those times, fresh, crusty, homemade bread is the ultimate thing to make. You feel like an adult. You feel like you're like, you know what? Life might be going down, you know, not great but I can make bread and everything's gonna be wonderful. So today I wanted to show you how to make a simple loaf of really delicious crusty bread. But since this is the good stuff, we're also gonna bump this up with some homemade chocolate pecan butter. I know. I'm very excited. We have a very excited cameraman over here. It's uh, very, very good. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna get to work on is that loaf of bread. So when you're making bread, sometimes you make a soda bread, which doesn't actually have yeast in it to let it rise. It doesn't get as puffy. But we're actually gonna do a yeast risen dough. Sounds scary if you haven't worked with yeast before. I know, seems intimidating, but don't worry. It's gonna be easy. So the first thing we need to do is get to work on that actual dough. So I've got a bowl here, and into there I want to mix my liquid. So for the liquid for this recipe, we need one and a half cups of warm tap water. You're thinking like baby bottle warm, you know what I mean? You do the thing like this, you test it on your wrist, if it feels warm, you're good to go. Essentially you want it to be warm because yeast, you actually, it's a little microorganism, and you wanna wake it up. You wanna wake it up with a nice, warm, delightful bath. It's gonna just be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is delightful. And it's gonna start essentially burping. Um, that's what the bubbles are. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, but you also wanna give it something to eat once it starts coming up. So we've got that water in there, but I'm also gonna add in a bit of sugar. For this, I'm gonna use honey. You could totally just use regular white sugar. You could even use maple syrup if you wanted to. About two teaspoons is perfect. You're not gonna taste it totally, so you don't have to use anything particularly flavorful. But again, I like the flavor of honey. It also, I don't know, honey, bread, seems like a thing. I don't know. <laughs> they get it, we get it, okay. Now I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a mix. And then into there, I wanna start adding in my dry ingredients. So for this bread, I'm going in with about two cups of bread flour. Now you can make this bread with all purpose if you're feeling like it, if you want to. But honestly, bread flour makes a crustier, chewier, more delicious bread. Now the difference between all purpose flour and bread flour, and then cake and pastry flour, is the amount of gluten in it. So bread flour has the most and the highest gluten content, so it gives you that stretch, that kind of net that holds onto those bubbles that the yeast makes. Uh, All-purpose flour is uh, basically kind of a blend between bread flour and cake and pastry. It's got a nice amount in there. Gonna hold things together, but not be overly like chewy. If you used cake and pastry flour, I don't know what you're making, but you're not making bread. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. Now, I do wanna add a bit of whole wheat flour into here. If you don't have whole wheat flour, don't worry about it. I'm going in with two cups of that. If you don't have it, just two more cups of bread flour will be perfect. So this is the tricky part. We're gonna give this an old college try. Okay, let's, ooh, we're going okay. Listen, bread making is more of an art than it is a science. Yes, there's whole things about hydration levels and things like that, but honestly, if it looks good, you're doing it okay. And honestly, with bread in particular too, it depends on the day. If it's a little bit rainy out, might need a bit more flour. So, you know, make it till it looks right if that makes sense. Now into there we're gonna add in that yeast and that's the stuff that gives those bubbles. So I'm using instant dry yeast here. Now if you're someone who's not gonna bake a lot, don't buy a jar, just buy those three little sachets that come together. There's about two and a quarter teaspoon in there, two and a half teaspoons, so that's how much I'm gonna use. If you are just using those little packs, just go in with one. So I'm going in with one, two, and a half. Now since I'm using instant dry yeast, I feel like I feel some people being like, whoa, whoa, what about blooming the yeast? Did anyone think that? Probably not, but that's okay. So instant dry yeast, you actually don't have to dissolve in the water and let it get foamy. It actually mixes right into the dry ingredients, so it's super simple to use. Now, I'm also gonna add in some salt. People might have told you that yeast is killed by salt. It's not true. Just kind of slows it down a little bit, holds it back, lets it kind of grow up nice and slowly, you know, gives it a bit more flavor. So I'm going in with about one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. If you are using sea salt, I'd only use about one teaspoon. Sea salt is saltier than kosher salt, so you wanna hold that back a bit. Now, I'm gonna do a very fun thing, and I call it the captain hook. So you hold, you hold your hook like your captain hook, and you get it in there, and you give it all a good mix. 
And what you want to do at this point, sometimes if you, if you put this on the mixer at this point, it's not going to get all that dough together. So I like to kind of bring it together like Captain Hook would into kind of a shaggy situation. Then I bring it over to the mixer. Pop it on. Hook that little dough hook on. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can easily do this by hand. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease. I'm just gonna knead this for about five-ish minutes, just until it comes together. Essentially, what you're doing when you're kneading dough is you're developing that gluten. You're making that web that's gonna hold on to all that delicious, like, yeasty bubbliness, which is gonna give you a chewy, springy loaf. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you do in a recipe, lock the bowl. <laughs> you know what? Wait, this is the good stuff, so we gotta swap, so don't worry about it. Once that is kneaded and you are good to go, you want to let that rise. Transfer it into a greased bowl and let it rise in a warm spot covered for about, I'd say, an hour and a half. Then you end up with something that looks like this, which is such a delight. Now, I'm gonna give a little cleanup. And I'm gonna do my very favorite thing in the world. First, I'm gonna give my hand a little bit of a flower, and we're gonna do a dough punch. So for a dough punch, you get your, your fist, and then you punch it, and it deflates, and then you give yourself a thumbs up, because that was fun. <laughs> what a delight. All right. I'm just gonna set that aside. What I wanna do now is I wanna turn this dough out onto a well-floured surface. This is a wetter dough, so give a good amount of flour down onto your work surface, and then just scrape that dough out of the bowl. Do you see how stretchy this is? And all those little kind of bubbles in the bottom of that bowl, that's the yeast making all of those bubbles, catching in that beautiful kind of gluten web. If you're not rooting for gluten, I don't know, this is not the bread for you, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, now to shape this dough, super simple. Basically what you wanna do is just grab one side of it and kind of stretch and fold it into the center. Give it a turn, stretch, fold, stretch, fold. Stretch, fold, you can guess the next step. Stretch, fold, give it a flip over, and then you've got a perfect little round loaf. Now, what I wanna do is transfer this onto a parchment-lined baking sheet. This is just gonna get set aside to rest, covered with a little towel, just until it is nicely risen. That should take about 30 minutes or so. Then you end up with something like this. I'm gonna bring her on over here. Do, 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 do. Look at that guy, what a delight. Now, I know. Very nice. Now what you wanna do at this point, if you were to throw this in the oven like this, you will get bread, it will be delicious. But to get that beautiful oven spring, that kind of like crack in the crust we're looking for, grab a serrated knife or a sharp knife and just kind of cut a slit. I like to do one on the side a little bit just to kind of open that up. That's gonna help this rise beautifully. Now I'm gonna go grab what we're gonna bake this baby in. So as opposed to using like a classic Wait, where are my oven mitts? There they are, I need those. Now, I'm gonna basically cook this bread in an oven inside of an oven. So we have got a hot Dutch oven here. This has been in a 450 degree oven. I put it in cold and then heated it up. So this thing is smoking hot. That's gonna, again, help with that oven spring. So I'm just gonna set the lid aside. Again, smoking hot, don't touch anything. Leave the mitt on top so you don't forget. Grab your bread, parchment paper and all, dump her in. You're good? I know, wild, right? And then what you're gonna do is pick up the lid, pop a little bit of water on top of here. This is gonna give you some steam, which again is gonna help with that spring. Little sizzle, little bit of sizzle. Add that in, pop the lid on. Quickly pop that back into your 450 oven for 15 minutes covered. Then what you wanna do, take the lid off, let it go for another 30 minutes, and you are gonna end up with crusty, beautiful bread. Your house is gonna smell amazing. I'm very excited about it. Look at this cutie little loaf. It is golden brown. It is glorious. We got that little oven spring mark. But if you really want to amp this up, if you don't just want to slather this with amazing butter, why not make a delicious chocolate pecan butter? Kind of reminiscent of like that like chocolate hazelnut spread. Do you know what I'm talking about? But with pecans, because I prefer pecans to hazelnuts. 
I'm getting, I'm getting glares from Antonio over here because he really wanted it. He's giving me the gears. Look at him go. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so we got to do a good job today. So the first thing I want to do, honestly, making nut butter at home sounds like something that you're like, Mary, I'm not going to do that. But it's so easy. It's so simple and it tastes so amazing. The first thing you want to do is test, toast your nuts. So I'm doing pecans. So I have got about two cups of pecans here. Now the recipe online is for a full batch, which uses four cups of pecans. But we're saving a bit of money today. Doing a little half batch. It's all good. We're good to go. Now what I want to do is toast these babies up. That's going to bring out their nuttiness and make them taste even better. So I want to pop those into a 325 degree oven just for about five to seven minutes. Essentially you want to toast them until it smells like pecans. If it smells like pecans, they're gonna be perfect. Or pecans, whatever floats your boat. Um, but if it starts smelling burnt, guess what? Uh-oh, you gotta go get new pecans. So, not the best thing in the world. Once they're toasted, you wanna transfer those into a food processor. Now, these ones here are cooled down, but if you had ones fresh out of the oven, you can pop them right on in as well. They don't need to be cool. The warm ones actually process up quicker because like the fats in the nuts are already like ready to go. They're already ready to do their thing. So add those nuts right on in. And again, you can do this with any sort of nut. Then I'm just going to process this. So pop that on. Right now we've got the texture of like a crumble. Now it's going into the world of like uh, pecan flour, kind of like almond flour. But soon the sound starts to change. Gets a little quieter. Do you hear that? So that is the fat starting to kind of get pulled out of those nuts. It's gonna start to get creamy. It's gonna start to get delicious. And then eventually it starts, do you see? It's getting a little like clumpy. And clumpy is what we're looking for. Once it's at about this stage, I'm gonna add in some chocolate. If those pecans were still hot, I would add in the chocolate, like cold, just broken up. I've got it melted here. You want about 30 grams of chocolate. And I'm, do you see it kind of running around the bowl? Guys, we're making pecan butter in real time here. Now I'm gonna add that chocolate right on in, just through the chute. What a delight this is gonna be. That chocolate's gonna help kind of bring this together as well already. Okay, the recipe says this is gonna take three to six minutes, but apparently if you have this mixer, it's gonna take one to two. Very nice and quick. Let's give that a look. Okay. Oh my gosh, this looks beautiful. Let's give it a scrape. So right now what we have is something that looks buttery. It looks spread, isn't that? Fun. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is so enjoyable. I love doing this. Um, give it a little bit of a scrape down. You're getting all of those delicious kind of smooth fats all together, being beautiful. But now to amp up that chocolate flavor, I'm gonna add in a little bit of cocoa powder. Not hot chocolate powder, this is pure cocoa. So I'm going in with about half a tablespoon of that. This is gonna just deepen the flavor. If you were making this for kids who maybe don't like that kind of bitter chocolate flavor, feel free to leave this out. Or you could amp it up with a bit of sweetness. I'm gonna add in just a touch of maple syrup, just for a little, these are maple syrup heads in this crowd. A little bit in. And then you wanna season that with some salt because nuts, chocolate, salt, best friends. So I've just got some salt here. You can use sea salt or kosher. And you wanna go in with just enough to like taste a little salty to you. I also like finishing, finishing it with a bit of salt just so you get those little crystals. We're gonna give that one more process. Just until that beautiful cocoa powder kind of comes together. How's she doing? Right now we've got crunchy chocolate peanut, what well not peanut, pecan butter. If we were to process this even more, you would get that smoothness. Like, look at that beautiful stuff. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, since this is natural, it will separate. Those fats will separate, so you can store it in the fridge. We've got some made right here. Like, look at this beautiful, creamy dreaminess. Now, I can't resist giving this a little taste, so I'm gonna cut into our nice crusty bread. Let's take a look at how she's doing. Oh yeah, look at that nice little crumb. Looking beautiful. Nice little slice out of there. Oh, I'm cutting a thick slice for me. Gonna cut it in half. Give this a little bit of a schmear. This is the part of the show where I tell everyone in the audience we're the meanest show on TV because I'm gonna eat a big old bite of this. <laughs> and it's gonna be delightful. Let's get some on here. But since we're not all that mean, let's give this a taste. Okay, I'm gonna give it a go, let's go. Oh my God. As you can tell, I took a big bite. <laughs> that on this bread, amazing. This on ice cream, get out of here. Or if you're looking for it, this shared with your good friend Antonio, who was giving you guff earlier. Let's bring this on over. <laughs> 
How's it going, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Approval? Oh, we did it! Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.